And welcome back. Since its founding in 1915, Women Creating Change has grown into an inclusive community, partnering with people and organizations focusing on unders underserved women to develop and strengthen the skills and resources needed to effectively identify the issues mattering to them most, as well as advocating for themselves in New York's diverse communities. WCC is focused on women's civic engagement and their principles are empowering women from underserved communities with the knowledge to be change makers in their communities and in their everyday lives. Joining me now to share a little bit more, I am joined by Women Creating Changes President and CEO, Carol Wasey and Board Chair, Deborah Martin Owens, and good to have you. Thanks for having us, Jen. Thank you so much for having us. Great. First, someone may not be so familiar with the organization. Why don't you uh, just give us a little bit of background into Women Creating Change? Sure. Um, we are an organization that was founded in 1950, as you mentioned, by some of the great women of our time. You're talking about Frances Perkins. Um, we have um, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh, just women who really led the way in New York City. And it's been um, in this last 106 years now, Carol, 107 years, we are just um, continuing that legacy. We are an organization that's focused on empowering women and being civically engaged in New York City. And so the history is long. Um, it's a who's who. And we're just really excited to be able to create a, a legacy for the next 100 years. Carol, share with me a little bit more about that word civic engagement. We talk about it here on the show a lot, but what does civic engagement mean for you? Yeah, it means a lot, and it's something we've spent a lot of time talking about as an organization. It really is helping to put people on the path to become civically engaged. We know women in communities across New York City are doing things in small and large ways to be involved and make a difference in their communities. So it could be everything from being part of a parent association at a school to attending a community board member or potentially being a, on the community board to running for office to volunteering in your community. There's a lot of ways that people get involved every day. And to just sort of tag on to what Deborah was saying, what women creating change has really been focused on how do we help women do that in ways that really support their needs, given that we know so much is on their plate every day. Yeah. And Deborah, so what is the mission right now for uh, women creating change? Oh my gosh. You know, it's just so exciting because we went through this whole strategic plan the last two years, and it really is about empowering um, women in underserved communities. It doesn't mean that we're sort of telling women to how to lead, but we're empowering them um, in their leadership, what they're already doing. And so when you talk about women being empowered, talk to us about that because you spend a lot of time uh, engaging, you know, engaging women. Why do you feel like it's important in a time such as this, particularly at a time such as this, uh, for women to be having their voices rise up? That's a great question, Darren. Um, for us, um, we've seen women leading in this for a very long time. For Black women, we have been involved from voting rights, from making sure that people got to certain um, churches, to making sure that they were uh, registering people to vote, to making sure that people had something to eat. As you know, we couldn't go to certain restaurants or certain places to get food. So we've always been involved. And I think for me, WCC has always been that, even if it started out an organization that didn't really envision um, the board chair being a Black woman. Um, but for now, um, it is sort of leading that legacy of we're always been leading. Now, whether or not we've been seen, we are leading in this area. And I think Carol can talk a little bit about more um, as to why we, we are doing this now. But to your point, this is the perfect time. We have a vice president that is a Black woman. We have a major um, uh, leadership positions in politics in New York State. I'll just talk about New York State right now. We think about Andrew Stewart Cousins, just a, a host of folks. And for us, we've always been leading and now Women Creating Change is just doing this for the next 100 years. Carol, you want to jump in? Yeah, I'm happy to jump in. And I have to say, um, whether or not our founders envisioned Deborah being our chair or not, 
I think they would be really pleased. I think somebody like Eleanor Roosevelt and others would be really pleased with the leadership that she has uh, shown to the organization. And as Deborah said, we went through a significant strategic planning process where we went out to the community. And that's what it's all about. It's not our organization deciding what should be happening in terms of civic engagement. The whole process was really about finding like what's needed in the community and how can an organization like WCC that's been around for a long time really help to support that. And again, it's about giving women what they need in ways that they need it in their communities and assisting them in any way that they tell us that they need. So it might be multiple languages that we might need to provide our trainings in or the materials in. It might be um, providing food at one of our events when we have them in person. Um, it might be providing daycare also when we're having events in person. It's really understanding the community we're trying to really work with and support and making sure that they have everything they need to get on their path to being civically engaged in their communities. Yeah. Uh, can you share a little bit with us about the, uh, our city, our vote coalition? Yeah, I'm happy to jump in on that. So that's a really important current initiative. We get involved in a whole array of initiatives related to civic engagement. Voting, of course, is one of them. And for all of the um, citizens in the country, when you turn 18, you know, you vote. Um, although we know there's still some challenges around voting, we can certainly talk about that. Uh, but there's also, in New York City, there's almost a million people who are here legally, um, who work and pay taxes and still can't vote. These are some of our greatest assets. These are people who really care about the communities in which they work and live. Um, and we're really working with a great host of partners, Idanis Rodriguez, council, city council member, um, as well as the New York Immigration Coalition and United Neighborhood Houses has been partnering with us um, to really make sure and really advocate for those 900,000 plus residents of New York City to vote. Historically, immigrants have been able to vote and we lost that along the way. And we think that they're such an important part of the fabric of New York City and of our country that we really wanna make sure that their vote voices are heard and that our elected, certainly at the city level, um, hear from them about what they want in their communities. Carol, um, as we look right now, what do you see as the primary issue uh, that really we, you, you wanna be engaged in in a time like this? Yeah, well, and I think when we think about issues, there's a lot of different issues that matter to different people. So as you were saying earlier, when we're still in the midst of a pandemic, so health and jobs and the economy are very important to people. So we want to make sure they have information that they need to be able to make good decisions for themselves, their families, and their people that they care about in their lives. And again, we're really trying to work with um, all the women that we're supporting to let them define the issues that are important to them and make sure that WCC can also just bring resources, skills, and support them on that path. Yeah. Deborah, talk to me for a few minutes about this as we talk about where we are today. Obviously, we said we're seeing women at the forefront. Uh, we're seeing women making change and impacting change. Uh, and you look at Washington, D.C., you mentioned uh, Kamala Harris, and you look in Congress, you look across the state, you see assembly leaders, political leaders, but if you're not even in any of those circles, women overall are having a larger footprint. Talk to us about um, what you're seeing and what you want your organization, uh, how would you like the organization to fill that gap? Uh, thank you so much, Darren. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, we see this org our organization as a place where uh, inclusivity lives. We want to make sure that all women are supported um, in their aspirations of being civically engaged. Sometimes we just don't know where to start, but if we look back, women are always advocating for their families, uh, for their community. They really are um, sort of leading in that issue. Now, whether or not they know what's going on in Washington, I think now we all do because it has been a tumultuous you know, time recently. Um, but I see this as an opportunity for WCC to lead and to support those women. We are a hundred plus year old organization. So our resources, our access to resources are tremendously more broad than maybe a particular group in, in a community like where I came from, which was in Queens. Um, so for us, we see that as saying, okay, we're going to lead, we're going to help women be empowered. They are closest to the problem. So they're closest to the solution. 
and this gives us um, the 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 ability to to do what we've always been doing. Right. And as you talk about doing what you've always been doing, I think all of us have been challenged by COVID-19 and this pandemic. Uh, how has it affected you doing what you've normally been doing? Yeah, it's definitely been um, a tough time for us, but I will tell you that with, under Carol's leadership, we have not skipped a beat. We've been putting out tremendous resources to all communities. We've actually hosted quite a few events called Table Talks, where we bring in uh, civic leaders to talk about the issues that are going on um, in our organization or in their community. So we haven't missed a beat under her leadership, but I will say it's kind of hard. If you are doing this kind of work, you are in the community and that's been difficult for us, but it doesn't mean that it hasn't been successful. I feel that we've been able to lead this even in the pandemic. Carol, so as we look towards the future, what do you have up, coming up next? Great question. Uh, there's a lot on the agenda. And as Deborah said, we have to pivot and really find ways to support people creatively during the pandemic. Um, so a couple things on the agenda that I think might be in, of interest to your uh, viewers. One is we're rolling out our first part of our initiative called Civic Matters. And Civic Matters is our signature program where we're really trying to deliver programming to support women. It was designed by women, with women um, to support women in communities across New York City. The first part of that is a workshop series. We have one coming up about sort of a know your rights um, and civic engagement 101. Um, and if you're interested in those, you can certainly reach out to us on our website. Um, and then we're going to be also looking ahead to developing an online resource hub. Um, people can come learn about information, but also take action on those resources down the road. We're also going to be developing a fellowship series as well as a civic leadership institute and great partners with all of them from great institutions across New York City. But coming up almost immediately, we have two great events. One is uh, coming up about voting. We have an important city um, vote coming up in June, and we'll be having a voting workshop on the 14th in partnership with the Civic Engagement Commission, as well as Democracy NYC. And the other exciting thing, Darren, that I wanted to share with you is we're going to be releasing a white paper. We thought it was really important to, to explain what we're doing, why we're doing it, um, understand some of the barriers to civic engagement, what it really is, why it makes a difference in communities across New York City. And we're also gonna be outlining some very specific recommendations for all sectors, nonprofit, foundations, corporate and government um, to really make a difference in civic engagement across New York City. And we're really excited about that. And that will be happening in the next month. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Deborah, before we go, uh, you're going to get the final, you get the final word. What would you like us to know? Um, a WCC is for everyone. We need everyone at the table supporting this organization as we support the community. That's including our men in our lives, be engaged, um, support. Uh, this is a, a time for us to be um, involved uh, now more than ever. Um, if you have an opportunity uh, please reach out. We're on social media. We're on LinkedIn. We're on uh, Facebook. We're on Twitter. Uh, follow us, engage with us, and just at the end of the day, understand that we all need this support uh, to support the community because it doesn't stop because we have, you know, certain folks in office. We have to continue to hold our electeds accountable. Um, so I would say that. So thank all you. Right. Well, thank you both for being here on the show. Certainly been a pleasure to have you and certainly a pleasure to learn more about your organization. Deborah Carroll, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Darren. All righty. Well, we're going to take a quick break here on the Social Justice Forums. Why don't you stay with us? We have more show coming up right after this.